Hello, everybody. I know you all have missed hearing my voice so, so much, and that you guys have just been so excited to start math again after this nice week we just had off. Um, so, today we are talking about polynomial equations. So, we've talked about linear equations that just have um, that x value, right? There's no exponents in there. We've done quadratic equations um, that has x squared, which has two solutions. So now we're going into polynomial equations. So polynomial equations have a highest power of anything that's bigger than two. So like x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the eighth, and so on. And so your highest power is going to determine how many solutions you have. Um, but that's a lot. So we're going to first learn some ways to kind of like narrow this down. Um, this is a fairly long section. I usually only split it up to a couple days. Um, but where we are remote this week, we're going to kind of stretch it out a little bit further so you guys aren't feeling overwhelmed and stressed. So we're just going to break it down into itty bitty pieces and then at the end we'll put it all together. So the first thing we want to do is learn how to find the possible rational zeros. So basically that just means all of the possible solutions. There's kind of an easy way to figure that out. All right, so let's say we have this polynomial 2x cubed minus 9x minus 5, right? So we can't solve this like a quadratic because it's not. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to be focusing specifically on um, the coefficient of our highest power and the constant term on the end. So we want to find the factors of our constant term. So that's the one I underlined in green. So the factors of the constant term right and we will go ahead and in the future we'll refer to this as um, the variable p. Right so p is going to represent our factors of in this case 5 right so we have 1 and 5. Um, now, remember, this is a negative 5, so really it's going to be plus or minus either one of these. right? It could be positive 1 or negative 1. It could be positive 5 or negative 5. We don't know. All right, and then we're going to do this again um, to find the factors of our leading coefficient. And the variable that we'll use to represent this is a q. So in this case, our leading coefficient is a 2. So our factors of 2 are, again, we have a plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So now that we have these factors, um, to find all of our possible zeros, um, we're going to take p and divide it by q. So we're going to take all of these and all of our p's, divide them by all of our q's. So, um, rather than do it for each positive negative, I'm just going to stick that plus or minus in front, um, which I will allow you all to do, and then just write your list of numbers afterwards. So, let's start with our 1, right? So, we've got of our piece. So we have um, 1 and we can divide it by this one right here. All right and then we also have our green one and we can divide it by our red 2. All right and then we'll take the 5 and we'll have to divide it also by the 1 and 2. Five over one and five over no nope, wrong color two. All right, so in this case, this expression only has four possible solutions. Well, really eight, right? Because you've got positive one, one half, five, and five over two. You also have the negatives of all of this. So really there are eight possible solutions to this um if it were an equation, we set it equal to zero. 
So, again, the first thing we want to focus on is just finding all of our possibilities. So, depending on what numbers we have as our constant and our low leading coefficient, this can get a little lengthy. But overall, it's not a difficult process. It's just one that's slightly more tedious. All right, so let's do another quick example here. All right, so let's find <clears throat> our factors of p, and remember that is going to be um, our constant factors. So factors of 12, we have 1 and 12, right? Then you have 2 and 6 and 3 and 4. All right, and again, we've got plus or minus all of those. All right, and then our q, in this case, since... Our leading coefficient here would just be a 1, since there's not a number in front of x to the 4th. So factors of 1 are just 1, right? So then we technically are taking all of our p's, dividing them by all of our q's. So we're basically just taking everything in our green list and dividing it by 1, which would make our final answers plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So this is fairly short when your leading coefficient is one. All right, and then let's do one last example of this, and then we'll move on to the next thing that we're going to talk about. So again, we need to find our factors of p, which in this case is two, so we've got one and two, and then q also is just going to have factors of one and two. So then we have to divide them. So remember, we do p divided by q, so we're going to do one divided by one. Oh, plus or minus in front. And then we will do 1 divided by 2. Oh, I meant to make that red. All right, I'm going to do this. All right, and then we're going to take our 2 and divide it by 1. And then we're going to also take our 2 and divide it by our other 2. Right, so then you need to reduce any of these that we can, right? So, 1 divided by 1 is 1, then we have a half, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, right? So, since that one's already there, um, you don't have to write it in your list twice. So, your final list would just be plus or minus 1, 1 half, and 2, right? Doesn't matter what order you let your list it. Let write your list in. There we go. Um, I don't care if you put them in any kind of descending order. If you just write them how they show up. Does not matter to me. Alright, so then the other types of problems have to deal with what we call the factor theorem. And basically, this just means that you're going to be plugging something in and seeing if it's going to be a factor or a solution to our equation. So remember that I said that solutions are also referred to as zeros, right? So think back to when we factored our quadratic equations, right? We had the two parts, we set them each equal to zero, right? The same kind of concept is going to apply here. So basically, um, and we're going to learn how to simplify these down in our next video, but so again, when if we took this factor up here, right, this x plus 2, and set it equal to 0. That means that x would be equal to negative 2. Basically, what we're trying to do, right, so again, so if we took that factor, set it equal to 0, x would be equal to negative 2, right? And so if this was set equal to 0, we basically want to plug negative 2 in for x and then simplify this down and see if it equals zero. If it equals zero, then it will be a valid factor. If it doesn't equal zero, then it's not. So let's go ahead and plug that negative two in everywhere there's an x. So remember, when you're using a calculator with negative numbers and exponents, you've got to put that whole negative number in parentheses or else you're not gonna get the right sign. Right, so we're going to do negative 2 to the 4th minus negative 2 to the 3rd minus 7 times negative 2 squared minus 2 plus 6. So negative 2 to the 4th means negative 2 times negative 2, 
which is positive 4, times another negative 2 is negative 8, times another negative 2 is a positive 16. Right, and then we're subtracting, right, negative 2 to the third would give us a negative 8. And then negative 2 squared is 4, times 7 is a negative 28, then minus 2 plus 6. Right, so then we're going to have 16 plus 8 minus 28 minus 2 plus 6. Right, so then you have 16 plus 8, which gives you 24. Then minus 28 gives you negative 4. Minus 2 is negative 6. And then plus 6 is 0, right? So yes, this is going to be a valid factor. Right, so again, let's just summarize and walk through what we did one more time. Basically, you have x plus 2, so you're going to take the opposite sign. We're going to take it. So in this case, that's going to be a negative 2. Plug that number in here. Work that out. Use order of operations. Combine this together. See if it equals 0. If it equals 0, it is a factor. If it does not equal 0, it's not a factor. All right, so this much will get you through your homework for today. Um, tomorrow's video will learn how to do synthetic division, which I think you all are really going to love. It's actually really fun, and there's a nice, easy process to it, and it's just very, I don't know, it's very satisfying. I think so, but you guys know I'm a math dork. Um, I love you all. I miss seeing your faces, especially you 10th graders. I haven't seen you in a long time, but um, please reach out and let me know if you have questions. I'll be doing my best to check LMS regularly, um, and as you all know, the LMS chat is a little funky, so if you... Send me a message on there. I don't get back to you soon enough. Please just shoot me an email at jlauderman at mercerchristian.com. Alright, again, so if you need me, my email is jlauderman at mercerchristian.com. Right, so please email me. I don't mind. I will. I promise you I will respond to that faster probably than I will an LMS message. Just because it comes straight to my phone, I get the notification where LMS doesn't give me any kind of notification until I refresh my page. Um, which I try to do at least every 30 minutes. So again, please email me if you guys need help. Um, and I hope you all have a good day.